You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. hello to young ladies and young men, but we don't have any men attending today, so I can say hello, young ladies. Hello, Mr. Pop. Today, we're going to be, you're going to, I'm going to introduce you all to a guest speaker by the name of Miss Camille. Welcome to Mr. Mr. Pop's, Pop's neighborhood, Miss Camille. Thank you, young ladies. Today's subject is going to be about mannerism and etiquette. Can y'all say that? Mannerism and etiquette. We're going to talk about how good mannerism and good etiquette can help you, and we're going to talk about how bad mannerism and bad etiquette can hurt you. How's that? Good. good. Now, guess what? What? Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Jayana Jackson. I am nine years old in the third grade, and I am part of Mr. Pop's Neighborhood. My name is Jaya Jackson. I'm 10 years old in the fifth grade, and I'm a part of Youth on Youth E2020. My name is Aviana Joseph, and I'm eight years old, and I'm a part of Youth on Youth Each One Teach One. My name is Trinity Brathway, and I'm eight years old, and I'm a part of Youth on Youth Each One Teach One. Now guess what, young ladies? Remember early on I said good mannerism and good etiquette can help you and bad mannerism and bad etiquette can hurt you? Yes. yes. Don't you know people like to be around young kids who have good mannerism and good etiquette that show yeah. polite behavior? Yes. Can you tell me your definition of good mannerism and good etiquette? My definition was that I called Trinity's mom and told her that she was going to be on your TV show and she said you're welcome to be on the TV show and her mom said had fun. That's called polite behavior. You politely invited her, right? Yes. yes. And she accepted your invitation, right? Yes. So also she showed good manners and good etiquette, right? Yes, sir. What's your definition? My definition is like if you have a birthday party and you can only invite eight people and the people around you help you get to this position, I would choose those four or five people who are with you because if you go and choose anybody else and they're right there saying you have a birthday party and they're not invited, they'll make them feel unwelcome and not needed and, not, and that you're not their friend, like you have nothing to do with them. So that's a form of polite also, right? Yes. yes. Now guess what? Isn't it nice to be polite? Yes. Don't people like to be around you when you're polite? Yes. yes. People don't like to be around you when you're not polite. Because that doesn't make you a leader. And uh, you're just respecting the other person that, like, if you're a friend and you're, and you're being rude to them, that's not being polite. You're just being rude to another friend that you might have that was so nice to you and they wanted to offer you something. You don't want to offer it because you don't want their stuff. Now, guess what young people have a problem accepting? What? Out in public, displaying good mannerism and good etiquette. When you go in a restaurant, you're supposed to walk in there as a nice young lady or a nice young man. You sit down, right? Yes. You don't tap on the table. You don't be banging with the salt shakers. You don't be rapping, talking loud making the next person around you uncomfortable. When we talked about when somebody's uncomfortable around you, that's bad mannerism too, right? Yes. yes. Especially when you don't know them. You're supposed to always display good behavior, correct? Yes. You don't also have to do with how you sit too, how you sit at a table, 
how you act like a young lady, how you act like a young man. Ms. Camille, would you like to contribute to this? Well, um, I like you, your definitions of etiquette and mannerism and being polite. You know, social grace is important in school, at home, um, on the job, wherever you are, in the grocery store with mom. Um, and kids tend to forget that today. Sometimes mom teach you guys at home and you come out and you don't use it. Don't use it at school. Say, for instance, you're coming to the TV show, you don't want to invite Trinity because you don't like Trinity or you had a bad day with Trinity at school. So that was very, very good of you to invite her to show leadership skills and sportsmanship. So that's a part of um, good mannerism and being polite as well. Let me share some of you that's very common among young people of all races, okay? First of all, what do you think about sagging jeans, sagging pants? I think, I think that's why people now wear uniform because if you, because if you go out there like, say if there's a science fair or something and you're sagging and you're representing for your school, they would be like, oh, I don't want to go to that school because they wear saggy jeans, rip holes in their jeans, and the principal just letting them get away with this. I would like to add on what Jaya said. Um, she was correct what she said. Like, if somebody's wearing sag jeans or like bad appropriate stuff, they want to be around that school. They would just go for a nice, calm school. No fighting, no arguments in clean rooms. They don't want no fighting during the rooms. They just want a nice, calm room where everybody want peace in the world. Anybody else? Let me well, I, I right. just want to share on that as well, that as students, when you go out into the public place with your pants hanging down, even girls do it too, their pants hanging down, um, their shirt hanging over, you know, not polite at all, not put to, well put together. They leave the house really neat. Mom put them together really neat, but then they get outside, their shoes is dirty, shoelace untied, your hair is messy you know, your face is greasy. You, you start at a young age of grooming yourself and hygiene is very, very important as well in etiquette and not just being polite, but also the way how you present yourself to your teachers, how you present yourself to other people and to your friends and your peers in school. That's important as well. Do you all ever hear the word stereotype? Have you ever heard that word before? No. no. Have you ever heard that word before? Stereotype, say stereotype. Stereotype. It labels you. You become a label. You become a statistic. When you stereotype, you fit under a certain category. And you know what the stereotype I want you all to fit up under? Decent, nice, respectful young ladies that you are. You all understand that? Yes. And I want you to remember something. What you are today determines where you are and what you'll be later on in life. You understand that? Yes. At a young age now, this is the time for somebody to groom you, show you good guidance, give you clarity and understanding, so you know how to be a respectful, law-abiding citizen. When you step out, people have good things to say about you. Do you know how it feels for your mom to be at work and maybe a client come up to a counter and say, are you Jayana's mother? She said, yes. She said, well, I want to tell you, your daughter is very polite. Your daughter shows good mannerism and etiquette. And she's the type of young girl that I like my daughter to be around because she set a positive example. Do you know how that makes your mother feel? Proud. Proud, what? happy, not disappointed. She's very proud of you. She don't want to whoop you or nothing. And she don't want to, like, like put you in punishment. Because you are a reflection. You are a reflection of your parents. Do you know how the teachers feel? They feel proud that my student has been put in this position, that she, that she has um, shown that she's responsible to do any job anybody can give her. And most of all, do you know who I really want to be proud? You know who I really want? 
I want you to be proud of yourself, first of all. Because that makes you feel like you're trying to live right, you're willing to live right, and you want to do right by people, right? Yes. It says a lot of good things about yourself as an individual. You know that, right? Yes. When you feel good about yourself, you want to display good behavior, right? Yes. yes. Am I correct? Yes, Pop. How about you? Self-esteem. Yes. yes. Good. So it comes out the way how you speak to your friends, the way how you speak to your sisters and brothers, the way how you speak to your teachers, your leaders. Being a leader, you don't have to bully someone or mistreat someone, right? Yeah. You treat the next person with what? Respect. Because you want like to their be. Like their family. Because you want them to be your friend. Yeah. Exactly. So you be nice. Be conservative to others you know say good morning when you walk by someone say good afternoon excuse me, excuse me. and they can be a new student and they probably don't know the language or what they have to do and you're picking on them on their first day that's being a bully and yes they're not allowed in school that's not why you go to school you know another form of etiquette and mannerism I want to discuss with you all say slanguage slanguage you are decent young ladies. I don't want to hear y'all use their words. I don't want to hear y'all use language. I want to hear y'all use proper language. Say proper language. Proper language. I want you all to concentrate as much as you can by reading dictionaries so you can learn appropriate words to use. Because nobody wants to use that language. Once you get accustomed to talking like the environment you're in, when you leave that environment, you take that with you. You remember back when I talked about stereotypes? Yes. Watch this, for instance. If you get accustomed to talking like the product of your environment or the way your peers talk, when you go on a job interview, you're so accustomed to talking that way, you'll find yourself talking that way in the interview. Now the interviewer stereotypes you. You understand what I mean by stereotype? Yes. But if you don't get accustomed to talking that way, you start talking proper English, right? Yes. How the person feels about you. They feel like you're rude, selfish, and unconsiderate. No, the opposite. If you're speaking good language, positive language. Then name, then they, then they mean you can hang around them, like you can talk to them, or they can be on, they can be interviewed again, and probably um, get to a higher position. Part of that. But what I want to prepare you for is this: when you go on a job interview, first of all, they want to know if you are a people's person. Can you relate to people? Are you kind to people? Because don't you know 80% of any business is customer service. The other 20% is the product. But watch this. If you don't display good customer service, you'll never make it to the product. Can I give you an example? Tell me one of your favorite stores. One of your favorite stores. Family Dollar. Family Dollar? How about yours? Burlington. Burlington? How about yours? How about yours? Burlington? Yeah. Okay. Family Dollar? Family Dollar? Watch this. You're entering into the store. You have an employee greet you at the door. Very rude to you. Make you feel uncomfortable. Make you feel intimidated. But your product is in the back of the store. The reason why I say to you 80% is customer service, the other 20% is the product. With bad customer service, you never make it to the 20%. You never make it to the product. Am I correct? Yes. You have a tendency of turn around and say, I'll spend my money elsewhere, or I'll come back when you're not working, or I'll call the manager when I get home and tell the manager how I was approached. Now, you see how important it is? Yes. So when the interviewer interview you and see you use proper language, speak articulate, speak eloquently, the first thing they say to themselves, this is who I want to greet customers. This young lady would be, be a great contributor to this business. You understand that, right? Yes. But when you use the opposite of language that you learned from your environment, what would the interviewer say? How would the interviewer feel then? They would feel like you're... Oh, take your time. Take your time. They would feel like you're... Like nobody put you in this position. You're doing this yourself to look cool or to act like you're... Like, you can, you can do this just because you think you all that? Well, what the interviewer was come to the conclusion that you're rude. 
and that you will hurt the business. They want you to contribute to the business, not hurt the business. Or nobody will listen to you. Or no one wants to come in and spend money with you. So all this plays a role in your life. Mannerism and etiquette, it plays a role in your life. That's what I want you all to concentrate on. What the first, what the first thing I said that you ought to get accustomed to doing, reading what? Dictionary, remember that? Yes. It helps you communicate with other people, dictionaries. You learn words. And always remember this, there's no such thing as a big word. You break the word down in syllables, you realize how small the word is. Just get accustomed to using those words. Y'all understand it? Yes. Y'all understand it too? Yes. And another thing I don't want y'all to get accustomed to doing, when you have a nice, when you have your peers, right, and you find your peers speaking eloquently and articulate like I just stated, I don't want y'all to say to that person, oh, you speaking like that? That ain't how we speak? That's a form of peer pressure. That is the way you speak. That's a lot of times you all have a tendency of doing that. When a person do speak proper, you tease that person. I don't want y'all to get accustomed to doing that. I want you to say, wow, that person speak real nice, articulate, eloquently. I need to speak the same way. Y'all understand it? Yes. yes. You understand it? Yes. You have anything, Ms. Camille? And speaking eloquently is not just y'all. You know what I'm saying? What you gotta do? That, that's, not, that's not English. That's not how you present yourself. What are you doing? How are you doing? What you learn from the teachers is what you portray, portray in your classroom and to your peers, correct? Yes. That's how you speak to your mom and dad at home and you speak to your friends when you're in the playground. You don't call on the phone and say, hey, what's going on? What y'all doing? Hi, how are you? What are you doing? Yeah, like if you're from like if you're from down south, that still doesn't have an excuse. You could still talk like that, but not like that. You could say, "Hi, mom, how are you doing?" But if you're southern, then you could say it like that, but not be rude like that. You know, being being polite brings you far. It brings you through college. It brings you to your workplace, out your workplace, and into a social environment. Social intelligence is very, very important. The way how you sit, your posture, your poise, is very, people look at everything. They, when you walk into someone's office, into someone's space, they look at your mannerism. They depict who you are by just looking at you because they know what they're looking for. Which, same thing when you go to school. The teachers look at you. They can tell if you're going to be a problem child, if you're going to be a child that's going to have manners to your peers, have manners to them. They look at all of that, and then the teachers begin to work with you. So you have to work with your teachers, too, right? Yes. yes. You work with the teachers, work with your classmates, work with your principal, work with the school system, because that's what the teachers are there for. They're there to empower you, to make you our future for tomorrow. So if the teacher tells you, you don't, you don't sit like this in the chair. You sit up because you're a lady. You're growing up to be a woman, so you want to sit with your shoulders up and sit back in the chair and keep yourself straight because when you, what if you want to be a lawyer? And you need to keep your legs closed if you're wearing a skirt. There is a way to sit in for every occasion. You know, you, you don't sit and open your legs like that. You sit with your legs closed. You know, you don't sit and put your, put your leg up like this. Men do that. Women sit with their legs like this. Okay, so there's, a, there's different ways to, to, to sit. There's different ways to speak as young women. All right, Trinity? Yes. Yeah. Sharon, I want you to say, repeat after me, say Sharon and Karen. Sharon, Sharon and Karen. Karen. I want to talk a moment about that. That's a part of mannerism and etiquette. I want you all to share with each other. For instance, if you have an extra pencil in school or ink pen and the person next to your desk doesn't have one, what is the appropriate thing to do? The appropriate thing to do is share with them. You don't like say, no, you're not going to have my stuff. You just share with them. You say, yes, you may use my stuff, but you have to give it back. That's and a part of, um, in etiquette, we call, we call that sharing. Sharing etiquette, that's what we call it. One of the things, one of the rules of sharing etiquette is you borrow someone's um, personal item, 
you replace it on time when you say you're going to replace it and you also take care of that item while it's in your position. So if someone lends you a pencil during school time, you say, I'll give you your pencil back after school, after class is over, and while you have it in your possession, you're going to take care of it so that if something happens tomorrow, you don't have a pencil, you can use the pencil again tomorrow, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. You know what else I want you all to focus on when I say sharing and caring? You all know just about everyone in your classroom, correct? Yes. yes. If you have a student, fellow student, that's missing two days, wouldn't it be polite for you to go to the teacher and ask about the welfare of that person? See if they're all right? Is, anything, is there anything you can do to show concern? Yes. yes. How do you feel about that? Good. Um, feel good about that, correct? Yes. yes. Doesn't that make a better world? Yes. yes. It teaches you to be a better person. I want you all to wake up in the morning, look in that mirror, and I want you to say, I'm a respectful person. Let me hear you say it. I'm a respectful person. And I'm going to display respect to people. And I'm going to display, display, display respect for people. That's right. And you all can do that. You know that, right? Yes. yes. Say, I'm a young lady. I'm a young lady. I'm going to conduct myself like a young lady. I'm going to conduct myself like a young lady. And I want people to treat me like I'm a young lady. And I want people to treat me like I'm a young lady. And I want to share something with you all, too. A lot of times, you young ladies have a tendency of provoking young boys. Now, watch this. That doesn't mean that a young boy has a right to be, disrespect, to be disrespectful to you. But I want you all to respect yourself to the extent where they have no choice but to be respectful to you. Do you know, young men think that when you don't respect yourself, they say, well, I don't have to respect them. But when young men see you respect yourself as young ladies, that's letting them know, look, you ought to treat me like a young lady and treat me like I respect myself. Y'all understand that? Yes. Remember earlier I said your self-esteem has a lot to do with how you present yourself. So if you're, if you're on the playground and you're being a bully, guess what? The boys are going bu to bully you back. And bullying is not acceptable, it's not nice. Don't bully each other. Be nice to each other. Be courteous. If someone needs something and you have it, you offer it. I want to share some with you all about the various topics of bullying. You have several types of bullying. First of all, use the word, say intimidation. Intimidation. Say uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Any time a person is uncomfortable in your presence, that's a form of bullying. Any time a person is intimidated in your presence, that's a form of bullying. You have silent bullying. Silent bullying is when people use facial expressions to intimidate you, to make you feel uncomfortable. Like, for instance, if a girl, you stand at a lock and a girl rolls her eyes at you, how do you feel? I would feel unrespected, like... She was being real. She didn't like you. Yes. How do you feel? I will feel sad and never want to come back. How do you feel? I'll feel sad because she's not going to be my friend. That's called silent bullying. Why is it silent bullying? It is silent bullying because... Like, Speak a little louder. It is silent bullying because, like... If you be nice to that person and they don't be nice to you back, that's just like silent bullying. Well, silent bullying is yes. no verbal sound. You're just using facial expressions, but the facial expression explains how you feel. Rolling your eyes, jerking your neck, doing your hand like this. Those are feminine attributes that women use to intimidate other women. Now, then you have verbal assault. Now, can anybody define what verbal assault is? That's a form of bullying. What's verbal assault? Verbal assault is bullying that you don't want to use and, like, you don't want to use it ever. It's like when you're talking really, like, breaking and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Verbal assault is when you call the person out of their name, when you verbally assault that person. When you're calling their mom names and their dad and their That's family. verbal assault. That's a form of bullying. 
Anybody else? Pop, mm -hmm. I, w I would like to make a connection to what you said earlier about bullying. Sure you One can. One time, um, when my friend um, niece was trying to climb up this ladder at a playground, this boy was had a juice came. He said, move it, pony face. And he was trying to come up the ladder, but there was another way to get up there. And he called her niece names. Then I told her to get down and went the other way so she won't get hurt or nothing, or her feelings will get hurt. And one time when I was at the hold park. Up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Guess what you just displayed? Can anybody tell what she just displayed? She just displayed that she didn't, she didn't laugh or comment about what she said. All she did was get her down and bring her to a safer place. Showed leadership. And I helped her little friend, um, too. I, she was call, that man, that little boy was calling her names, too. So I just told them to both get down. I catch them out of the ladder. And I told them to go the other way together. And they became friends. Guess what the most important thing you did? The most important thing you did was you didn't join in with the other kids and you didn't allow the kids to join in with you on being disrespectful. Do you know that if the other kids would have joined in on you, it would have been totally out of control? You showed leadership. Do you know how the individual, do you know that young girl never forget you? Do you know that? Do you know she went home and told her parents or told relatives? This young girl helped me in the playground. I'm proud of you. Are you proud of yourself? Yes, Pop. I feel very proud of myself. And one time when I was at the park, I accidentally bumped my head and this boy laughed at me. All I did was ignore him and go the other way. That's what you just displayed. She showed leadership in herself. She didn't, like, follow him or nothing. She. She just ignored him and moved on. But guess what the most positive attribute she displayed? Self-control. Come on, Ms. Camille. Self-control. And guess what else? Guess what fits with self-control? Say anger management. Anger management. Now, who can define, one at a time, define anger management? And listen now, it's self-explanatory. You know what anger is, correct? Yes. yes. You know what management means, right? Yes. So put it together and somebody, one at a time, explain the definition of anger management. Um, one anger management that I taught, that um, I learned from my teacher that um, Well, young ladies, I want to thank you all for taking time out to be involved in Mr. Pop's neighborhood. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful day in the neighborhood. Wonderful day in the neighborhood. Wonderful day in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. Nobody can deny it. Welcome to Mr. Hobbs' neighborhood, where everything is all good in our hood.